Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this question, we have been given the synchronous sequential circuit, and as you can see, it consists of the D flip flops, the multiplexers, and the logic gates. So as you can see over here, this clock signal is applied to the positive A trigger D flip flops, and here we have been asked to find the sequence of the output Y during this time. So as you can see over here, through the multiplexers. The inputs are applied to the D flip flop. So here, this S is the selection input for the all the multiplexers, while the D in is the input for the first multiplexer. So whenever this S input is equal to zero, then the zero number input will get selected, and whenever this S is equal to one, then the one number input will be available at the output side. So here, if you observe, whenever the S input is equal to zero, then the output of the flip flop. Is connected back to the input side. That means whenever this S input is zero, then the flip flop will retain its present state. And whenever this S input is one, then as you can see, for the first multiplexer, this D in input will be applied to the output side. So let's say these three flip flops are D two, D one, and D zero. That means whenever this S input is one, then this D in input will be applied to this D two flip flop. And likewise. If you see this D1 and D0 flip flops, then the output of the previous stage is connected as an input to this these flip flops. So here we have been already given the timing sequence for this D and the S inputs. Moreover, we have been also given that initially all the flip flops have been reset to zero. So if you observe over here, then the outputs of the flip flops are connected to the logic gates. So let's say these two AND gates are one and two. So for the first AND gate, if you see the inputs, then that is equal to Q2 bar and the Q1. That means the output of the first AND gate is equal to Q2 dot Q1. Likewise, the inputs for the second AND gate is equal to Q1 and the Q0. That means the output of the second AND gate will be equal to Q1 dot Q0. And these two outputs are connected to the NAND gate. That means if we see the output Y. Then it is the complement of this Q2 bar dot Q1 dot Q0. So this will be the output Y. So here we've been asked to find this output Y between these three and the five clock cycles. So let us find that. So during the clock pulses, this is the sequence of the S and the D inputs. So here, since the D flip flop is the H triggered, so at the every rising gauge, if we see the value of the S input, then that is equal to One 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 zero, one zero one one. Likewise, if we see the D in input, then that is equal to one one zero, one 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 zero. And the same is also shown in the tabular form. That means during the first clock cycle, if we see the value of the S, then that is equal to one. So as you know, whenever the S input is equal to one, then this D in input will be applied to this D two flip flop. And likewise. The output of the previous stage will be applied to the D1 and the D0 inputs, and during the first clock pulse, the value of the D in input is also equal to one. That means just before the first clock pulse, if we see the inputs D2, D1, and D0, then that is equal to one zero zero. So here, this D1 and D0 is equal to zero because we have been given that initially all the flip flops have been reset to zero. That's why just before the first clock pulse. All these outputs Q2, Q1, and Q0 will remain zero, and that is why here this D1 and D0 inputs are zero. So now, during the first clock pulse, based on these inputs, the output of the flip flop will change. So as you know, for the D flip flop, the output is same as the input. That means just after the first clock pulse, if we see the outputs Q2, Q1, and Q0, then that is also equal to one zero zero, and here this output Y. Is the complement of this Q2 bar dot Q1 dot Q0. So here, since the Q2 is equal to one, so this Q2 bar will remain zero. And if we take the complement of it, then this Y output will be equal to one. That means during the first clock pulse, this Y output is equal to one. So similarly, now let us see what happens during the second clock pulse. So during the second clock pulse, once again, this S input is equal to one. That means once again. The input to this D2 flip flop is equal to D in, and as you can see during the second clock pulse also, this D in input is equal to one. 
that means once again this d2 input is equal to 1 and since the s is equal to 1 so for this d1 and d0 flip flops the output of the previous stage will be applied as an input that means here this q2 output will be applied as an input to this d1 flip flop and likewise this q1 output will be applied as an input to this d0 flip flop that means during the second clock pulse this d2 d1 and d0 inputs are 1 1 0 that means just after the second clock pulse if you see the outputs then these outputs q2 q1 and q0 will also be equal to 1 1 0 and based on these outputs this y output will also remain 1 so likewise now during the third clock pulse once again the value of the s input is equal to 1 that means once again for this d2 input the input is equal to d in so now during the third clock pulse the value of the d in input is equal to 0 that means now this d in input will become 0 while the inputs for the d1 and d0 is coming from the previous stage that means this q2 input will be applied as an input to this d1 flip flop while this q1 output will be applied as an input to this d0 flip flop that means now during the third clock pulse this inputs d2 d1 and d0 is equal to 0 1 1 and just after the clock pulse the same will be also available at the output side so now after the third clock pulse this outputs q2 q1 and q0 is equal to 0 1 1 and based on this flip flop outputs this output y will become 0 so now during the fourth clock cycle the value of the s will become 0 so like i said earlier whenever the s input is 0 then the output of the flip flop will be feedback as an input to the same flip flop or in other words the flip flop will retain its current state that means during the fourth clock cycle if you see the inputs d2 d1 and d0 then that is equal to 0 1 1 and after the fourth clock pulse the same will be also available at the output side so once again based on this flip flop outputs this output y will remain 0 so these are the outputs of the circuit during the first four clock cycles so likewise let us see the output y during the fifth clock cycle so once again during the fifth clock cycle this s input will become 1 that means now for this d2 flip flop the input will be equal to d in and as you can see for the fifth clock cycle the value of the d in is equal to 1 that means now this d2 input is equal to 1 and for this d1 and d0 flip flops the output of the previous stage will act as an input that means this q2 output will act as an input for this d1 flip flop but this q1 output will act as an input for this d0 flip flop so now the inputs to the d2 d1 and d0 is equal to 1 0 1 and after the fifth clock pulse the same will also appear at the output side that means now this outputs q2 q1 and q0 is equal to 1 0 1 and based on these outputs this output y will become 1 so in this way we got the output of the sequential circuit during the first five clock cycles and similarly we can also find the outputs for the other clock cycles but here since we have been asked to find the output during these three clock cycles so as you can see during this time the output sequence is equal to 0 0 1 so from this we can say that for the given sequential circuit this output y from the third to fifth clock cycle is equal to 0 0 1 and therefore for the given question this a is the correct answer